Right, so welcome back guys, welcome to your first time here. I'm Vision here with Wine Entertainment, bringing you guys another video. Today I'm giving you guys my review for Fear the Walking Dead, Season 6, Episode 7, Damage from the Inside. Now, if the Walking Dead is something you're interested in, don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below and hit the bell icon, that way to miss any more Walking Dead content from me. Moving forward, now let's begin. So, we're now at this mid-season finale of Fear the Walking Dead, Season 6, Damage from the Inside. Now, I gotta say, I wasn't, I didn't really have high expectations for the mid-season finale due to the simple fact that it wasn't meant to be the season finale they weren't able to film episode 8 and have it ready in time due to having sh having to shut down due to pandemic so i didn't have very high expectations for this episode however it definitely pulled through and definitely seemed in my opinion to pull off a decent to good season mid-season finale and i really did enjoy it now it, as we all know dakota goes missing we saw that they were traveling on their way to i think they said some kind of bunker or something to, now this is something i'm very interested in we didn't really get we didn't actually get any kind of talk as to why they were going to this bunker or anything so i'm very curious into that why they were going to this bunker i hope it's explained next seat next in the next half of the season because i would really want to know why um maybe it had something to do with what happened at the end of the last episode with the spray paint people they were being on guard so virginia sent her sister to the bunker i don't really know but overall i'm not taking too many points off there it, it's kind of a plot hole but at the same time it's fine but she ends up going missing as they are stopped in the middle of the road due to people being dead in the middle of the road and strand goes to investigate and finds a bunch of the a bunch of rangers dead in on the, on the trail now from there he calls up alicia and charlie to go find and bring dakota back to them now this is very interesting because i really like how they did this thing where you got alicia who's angry at strand for what he did so she doesn't always pick up the walkie talkie right away and kind of make the waits a minute before picking it up now she of course questions why strand is sending her and she, strand is saying that if this the if he can go through with this he can and begin doing the damage from the inside that they talked about at the end of last season so we get to see why strand was motivated to have alicia and charlie go after him because we did it was kind of questionable as to why but now we know why he had his own alternative motives to doing so now they're traveling in the woods looking for dakota and they end up coming across a bunch of walkers who are look different and kind of been experimented on so they end up continuing to follow the trail and they end up coming across this cabin in the woods now charlie stays behind that side as alicia goes to investigate and she finds this very creepy cabin and finds this like table where people where this walker is being held down and this guy is doing experiments on him now as she's trying to investigate she ends up being kidnapped by this person and now she's originally able to escape and it's revealed that dakota is there with the guy the guy uh cap had saved her in at least in dakota's eyes and she had trusted this guy whose name is ed now ed invites alicia to stay with him in their home or in his cabin and we get to learn a bit of his backstory as you know he and his family this was their like i guess like vacation home or whatever and they had been staying there one day ed went out for a supply run and virginia had found them and killed his family so this kind of turned ed into the person he was and i really like it i I feel like it's kind of a parallels eastman story from the main show when he met with morgan i really like that and you got alicia who is on the fence she kind of trusts this guy but doesn't trust the guy she's very on the fence but slowly she realizes that okay this guy's kind of sketchy we need to get out of here i need to get you you know to safety and she decides to radio virginia and tell virginia she'll make a deal to give her dakota and that she'll, if in in exchange virginia will have to let charlie go and not hunt them down now you got um, Virginia, who agrees to this, but is questioning Alicia's ideology at first. Now, it's not revealed at the time, but it was revealed at the end of the episode that, um, Alicia's been tracking and looking for their way to get back to the stadium and maybe build up a community there. So I really like that. I do not believe if th that they'll go back to the stadium. I feel like this was just a callback. I know there are a lot of people who want to see Madison back. I don't like Madison as a character. I never did. And nor do I care if she returns because she was not my favorite character. But yeah, I don't think they're going back to the stadium. I feel like it's just an Easter egg, a callback. There's no reason for them to really go back to the stadium. And plus, you have to think of it logistically because that stadium is owned they have to make, be able to you know film there they have to be able to use it they have to have the rights to use it so i highly doubt they'll be able to get it back and have it full-time use as a camp so i'm gonna say the stadium isn't um fully in 
possible? I mean, unless it's not an actual stadium, someone let me know in the comment section, is it a real stadium or is it just like a set piece? Because if it's a real stadium, yeah, they can't, that's like a very tall order. So they most likely won't be able to get that back. But you got them who try to work at, figure out a way out. Uh, Charlie sneaks in and she decides to help them escape. And eventually Ed kind of turns on them and says that he isn't going to let them leave. And at which point they get into a scuffle and Alicia... Uh, severe, severely wounds him now she I guess is shocked and I feel like this is a, a transformation episode for Alicia because she is shocked and upset that she killed this person compared to how she has been lately so I feel like this is a turn in her character from the past two seasons and she wants to help this guy but you got Charlie and Dakota who tell her no it's too late and at that point he had set up a record player and you got the walkers outside that he had ward there and they begin to you know, take out the building and overrun the, his house. Now, Ed does sacrifice himself and allows Alicia to go, saying that she needs to, you know, live her life and get, and make sure that she does better than him or whatnot. Now, they try to escape, however, as they're quickly overrun, and just as things look to be going bad for them, you got uh, Morgan who shows up and rescues them, and with the combined efforts of Alicia and Morgan, they're able to clear out the house and escape. Now, one of the biggest issue, arguments I see people making here with this episode, and I've been seeing it a lot with the episode six when he showed up with, to like, bring the captured guy to uh, Dwight and Sherry, but a lot of people are talking about how Morgan just ends up some in these places and like they joke saying he has superpowers and can teleport but it's easily explained here why he was in the area so I don't understand why people are making a big deal out of this because he mentions that he heard the music on the record player and followed the noise to the house I, I, so I don't understand why people are making a big deal out of this saying oh it's ridiculous it was just convenience no it was actually explained through dialogue why he ended up at the house so that really frustrated me but from there, you got them who regroup, and in the morning, you got Morgan who reveals that he's the one who set up the roadblock, and he's the one who wanted to kidnap Dakota and hold her for ransom in order to exchange her for the rest of their people. Now, you got um, Alicia who dis disagrees, saying that she doesn't want to do that, and that they she has another plan in mind. However, the two of them get into a bit of a ver verbal disagreement. And you got Alicia who says that she wants to use her to get their freedom. However, Morgan ends up once is adamant about using her as leverage. However, at the end of the day, Morgan agrees with Charlie, with Alicia to make the deal. But instead, they end up went and having Dakota re join them at Morgan's place after he convinces Alicia to join them. Now, you have Strange who ends up arriving at the end of the episode to retrieve Dakota. However, it's, you got Alicia who turns on him and he threatens to kill him and it, it, if he tries to do anything. And Morgan shows up and the two, the three of them have a bit of a standoff. And at the end, Strand shocked that um, Morgan's alive because Virginia made sure not to tell him. Uh, lets them go on their way and and the three of them or four of them head off with Morgan in his in his plan to go back to his camp that he has set up. Now, one of the things I am hoping for in the second half, and this is something I really want to see, is Morgan hopefully going forward with his plan to use Dakota as leverage. I really hope he just said what he said to Alicia just to get out of the situation and get back to where his camp is. And I really do hope he kind of turns on her and uses Dakota as leverage. I think that'd be great for Morgan's character and show how he's changed. And it, I feel like it could also give a good split within our group and has caused some good tension. So I really hope we could see Morgan turn and go forth with his plan. At least that's my opinion. I know some people are against that, but I would really like to see Morgan turn on Alicia or use, go forth with his plan. I don't really mean turn Alicia, turn on her, but maybe convince her that his plan is the right way. Now, then we got the end where he got Strange who returns to Walltown and he informs uh, Virginia of everything that happens. Now, Virginia ends up taking Strand to a secret prison she has in Walltown and it's revealed that Virginia has kept Grace in a prisoner. That way Morgan can't find her and she orders her rangers to gather everybody that they picked up from the Gulge and to bring her there. So this is, I feel like this was a really great setup for the second half. Even though it wasn't meant to be the mid-season finale, it was a really good mid-season finale overall. And I do, given off the trailer that we got for the second half, I do feel like there might be big death in the mid-season finale because we do see a lineup 
where our people are being held at gunpoint. I don't I don't know who it could be or if that is even in the next episode. It could be later on in the season, so I don't know. But I definitely really liked this episode. It was a really strong mid-season finale and definitely set up some good stuff for the second half, even though it really wasn't meant originally to be a mid-season finale. If I had to give it a grade, though, overall, I'd probably give it a 9.5 out of 10. Really great, solid episode, and I can't wait to see what they have left for us in the second half of season six but let me know all your thoughts and opinions on the episode in the comment section down below oh yeah guys that's my review of fear the walking dead season six episode seven damage from the inside as always if you like this video don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and share don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below and hit that bell icon that way to miss any more walking dead content from me moving forward and you can go follow me on Instagram and Twitter, which are linked in the about section of my YouTube channel. As always, this is my vision here on Boy Entertainment, and I'll see you next time.